King Deputy Extraordinaire. My name is Bob Lindsay, and, and you know what? I'm going to do a second part of the interview with Mike C. And the reason I say that is interviewing isn't for my forte. Law enforcement is, and that's why I'm running for sheriff. But you know, off camera, I was talking to Mike after we got done with the interview, and I was asking him a few more questions, and up popped a whole lot of other details about what's happened. For all of you out there, if you don't know this, the Sheriff's Department has about 8,500 deputies. We, we don't have that many now because there's so many vacancies. There's probably about 1,500 vacancies right now when you count deputies and sergeants and lieutenants. That's a lot of vacancies. But he also has those 1,100 investigations going on deputies. Now, some of them are at home, relieved of duty. That would mean maybe 100 and 59, he's hiding a whole bunch over to the side. He doesn't want to put him in that category. And he puts him in a category called fitness for duty. And it's a ridiculous category because they all should just be lumped in. They're not, they're not at work. But there's different ways that the sheriff does this. Some of them are sitting on the couch getting paid, doing nothing. But they're prisoners because they can't leave their house. they got to stay at their house from 8 to 5. Monday through Friday, and you try staying home 8 to 5 every day for a year. How would you like that? It, it would drive you insane, and that's what's happening to deputies. And then some deputies, they put somewhere else like they did Mike, and they put him at the Emergency Operations Bureau doing tasks. Now, the Sheriff of Los Angeles County, I'm told, has told the press that deputies don't do menial tasks. They're not given menial tasks if they're placed off duty. We know that's not true because we've heard Mike's story. But aside from that, and I'm going to be asking Mike in a second, there's other ramifications that come with investigations and discipline and all of the other things that this sheriff is doing. So take, for instance, he gets in an off-duty argument, which maybe deserves a couple of days off, if he's at fault at all. Maybe he's not. But rather than getting a couple of days, what they do is they jack up the days to a really high level to destroy your career. They give you 15 days off, because once you get more than I think it's 10, you're messed up for promotions, for transfers, for bonus positions, for everything else. So this is just another way to play with the deputies, to show them who's boss. And here's a guy who served 13 years, been in four shootings, and this is how he's treated. So Mike, I'm going to ask you a simple question. I know what the answer is, but I think they need to hear it from you. Were you assigned any menial chores or duties? Absolutely, 100%. So if the sheriff says that's not happening, I'm guessing that's not true. I'm guessing he does, he's just going to pretend to not know what's happening. There's no way he doesn't know. People, have, I'm sure, told him about it. So tell me what else happened once you went over there, because I, I understand you're a pilot. Yes, sir. I got my private pilot license 
my one of my goals on this department was being a pilot for the sheriff's uh, for Aero Bureau for our department. So you were being considered for that, or you were applying for that, or what's happening? I'm applying for the um, mm. um, the observer seat. Uh, you have to go through the observer seat before you get to the pilot seat. Right. And I'm not, I, I made it to number one on the list. I, I, I tested, I think, at number five. I made it to number one, and about a month, month and a half ago, my number came up, and uh, the department had to skip over me because of this this minor off-duty um, argument that I had with Ventura Sheriffs. So how long had you been waiting? Uh, almost... Two years. I mean, I took that test a while ago and um, finally made it. And I was excited about it, but they skipped over me. So rather than, at this point, rather than being able to go to Aero Bureau as an observer, as a trained pilot, by the way, you already have the experience. Yes. So they don't need to train you. You have it. Yes, I have a private pilot license. Yes. So now... How do you get there? Um, if the list expires, I'm going to have to retest. And the way the centralized testing is right now, um, you know, it's kind of a crapshoot. Roll the dice. I might land at number 20 and never get considered again. So this is kind of, it, it may or may not work out for me. So not only, and I understand you got days off. Yes, I got 15 days off. And any, any time, if you get five days off, you can still promote. Anything over five days, um, you can't promote for two years. And so I got 15 days off, so I, I can't promote to come to the testing spot for uh, two years. But it, it's kind of a double jeopardy thing because they put me on the investigation in June of 2015. And they exhaust the entire year. Then they uh, give me the 15 days off. I served the 15 days off, no pay. And now I'm, I went through the civil service process to um, uh, win the case, get my money back. And But this whole time I've been benched or moved. I got skipped over to Arrow. So it's kind of a double jeopardy, especially if I win. If I win, it's like I already got disciplined anyway. So for saying something in an off-duty incident to another officer wherein there was no fighting, there was no altercation, I mean, that you, you were drunk, you, you were having a conversation, you guys didn't agree. Yes. You've pretty much been banished to porta potties losing the opportunity to go to Aero Bureau. Yes. And maybe for another two years. Possibly, if ever. I mean, we'll see how it unfolds. So, you're a fighter, I know that, or you wouldn't be here today because you know you stand the chance of retaliation. Yeah. You're fighting in civil service. Yes. I refuse to sit back and just... I mean, one of the main reasons why I ever became a deputy sheriff was because I don't like people that take advantage of people. Right? Right. And people, especially people that can't defend themselves. And bullying. And now I'm here as deputy sheriff getting bullied. And I, I just refuse to sit here and take it. I, I, I won't. I mean, I've, I've made mistakes in the past in my career, nothing big, and, I, and I, I will stand there and I'll tell them, yeah, I messed up. I've never had a problem with that. And uh, when you see how the department is, how political it's become, it's, I mean, they're, they're more worried about the bottom line and money and running as a business rather than a service for your communities. You know, and that is what we're seeing all over the department. You know what, like I said earlier, he's human. and. Given his experience, and he has 13 years on, I'm going to tell you right now, public, you need to know this. Invested in him is probably well over a million dollars of training, experience. When you start out and you talk about him going through the recruitment process, the background process, he then has to go through the academy. After he graduates from the academy, he has to go to custody training. After custody training, he goes through four years, three, four, five, sometimes seven years of custody, then he goes out to Compton Station where guess what? He starts all over again. And he has to go through patrol training. Now he gets patrol training, but before that you have to go to patrol school, then patrol training. And then you do your thing out in Compton, and finally you become a, a field training officer, and ultimately 
you reach the pinnacle of where he got, which is Operation Safe Streets. And now we throw them away. You're talking over a million dollars of financial asset. Forget the human aspect for a second. The sheriff is throwing away a million dollars. And you know what? I hear so many deputies getting frustrated. It's guys like Mike that say, I've had enough. And they leave the department. They leave the department and they leave a hole that is going to take 13 years to fill. 13 years. Why? Because he had a discussion with somebody in Ventura County. That's it. So, Mike, I understand everything that you've told me about not being able to go to Arrow, about the part, the menial task that you're doing right now, um, the, the fact that you, personally, your life's already being disrupted because you have the divorce going on. I feel like they used my divorce to break me. You know, they saw that struggle, and that's why the freeway therapy and taking your overtime away, you know, they almost use it as leverage. Well, what would you want to say to the rest of the deputy sheriffs out there? Because you have the courage to be here. And I'm not saying anything to you deputies like you need to be sitting here. Because trust me, in 2003 when I stood up to Paul Tanaka and told him I wasn't going to do what he wanted me to do, I was attacked. And I beat him. And then he attacked my son. And we're winning that. But I will tell you, there is retribution. There is retaliation. So what, what would you want to tell the rest of your partners out there? And it doesn't, it's not just OSS. Look, at, there's a lot of people in the jail. There's a lot of deputies in patrol stations who respect you, who look up to you. Because you are one of those deputies who did everything. You reached that spot. You worked hard. You deserved it. You earned it. And now you're going through this. What What do you want to say to them? What I would say to all the deputies on the department is our department used to be looked at as the greatest law enforcement agency in the free world. And because of Sheriff McDonald, that's going away, or it's already gone. Um, from the people I've worked with, I'd say you have a voice. Um, piggyback off of me, let me be your voice, um, continue to work hard, know your policy, know your laws, because the second they can use it against you, they will. Um, I'd say we need change, and uh, no department is a successful department without its troops, its deputies, and um, you know, you just gotta do the right thing. It's it's very easy. Do the right thing so you can sleep at night and do the right thing so you can keep your career. You know, I, I said earlier that Mike's a hero. There's a lot of heroes out there. There's a lot of deputies and I know that you want to do a lot more to protect the community. This is a guy who's being attacked and yet what did he just say? He said, do your job because that's what you do best. Do your job. What I would tell you is do your job, but watch your back. Do your job and be careful. Be very careful because it's not the community you need to be concerned about. It's the leadership at the top of the agency. Know that if something happens to you, that you need to find the right representation. Just as I would tell anybody else out on the streets, as I would tell anybody else who's going through a criminal act, if you get arrested, get a good attorney. Get good representation. Because you know what? Part of what this sheriff is doing to guys like Mike is trying to run him out of money. He's trying to run him out of hope. He's trying to run him out of patience. But you know what? It's not going to happen. Because Mike sits here today ready to fight, ready to stand up for himself, ready to do what he knows is right, because he, of all people, 
knows what situation is and he knows the truth. So if you're being fed lies and they're trying to come after you and give you discipline that is unnecessary, way beyond the scope of what it takes to fix the situation or resolve the situation. You know what, I don't even think the Ventura guys probably realize the damage that's been done to you over this incident, that it has taken your entire career away, that it's disrupted the flow of cash during a divorce, the pressure that has caused you for one conversation. Nobody realizes it, but you out there, he's telling you, it's the truth. I've seen it, I've heard it, and every deputy out there needs to understand that this is not just a story. This is Mike's story, and it could be your story tomorrow. My name is Bob Lindsay. Let's take the politics and the politicians out of law enforcement.